Okay, welcome to another iPad drawing tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna draw something still autumn and fall related. So I'm gonna draw some acorns with a couple of leaves attached. So I have an A4 canvas open in Procreate. I'm gonna do a pencil drawing. So in terms of the settings, I've got it on sketching. I've got a 6B pencil. I'm gonna have it at 15% size and 60% opacity. And in terms of the color, well, it doesn't matter on the actual color. What is important is you go to the inner part of your color options and you just slide it down so it's not all the way to the black but a dial back a bit away from there and it's still going to be pretty dark but it's just not quite yet black and therefore looks a bit more natural a bit more like a real pencil now if you do follow along with any of my tutorials and you want to share them with me and other people then there is a link in the video description for my instagram and also a facebook group where loads of people put their work up and get feedback from the other members. It's a great community. So look down in the description for those links. And But in terms of the acorns, I'm gonna keep it pretty straightforward. So we're just gonna have something like an oval shape with a slight flatter part at the top, but it's not fully flat, but it is not a complete oval. But you're not gonna see this part of the oval anyway, because it's gonna be contained in the acorn cup. So we can draw the line across, and then we've got a section that juts out here and here, because it obviously has to be a bit bigger to contain the main part of the acorn. And then we can do another one perhaps on its side. So we'll, again, we'll start with the oval, and then it's gonna go slightly behind the other one. We'll have it in another cup shape, something like this. Now, you don't have to rely totally upon the image that I'm showing you in my version. Now, if you want to find a reference image for the main shapes and for the layouts, then there's tons of you know images of acorns available if you were to just Google it, or if you find an actual acorn at this time of year, even better, depending on where you live. And we're just gonna do maybe like a baby one that's just poking out here, and then we've got a branch that can maybe go off the canvas, and then we'll, we'll have a leaf, but we're not going to get bogged down in the leaf too much, so we can have that going off the edge there, have that going off the edge there. I'll come back to the leaf a little bit later. Now, in terms of the separation between the actual cup and the the acorn itself. So there's gonna be a little bit of a gap and you'll notice it at the sides predominantly. You have a little dark section there and there where it doesn't quite touch. And then you're going to just make this line not completely smooth and regular. So it's gonna have some bumps and a bit of a wave in it. So it's not completely perfect looking. That's not going to look very natural if it is. We'll just darken up this section. And then on the end of the acorn, it's just going to have a little blip there something like this. I'll just go in, tidy up this edge of the cup. Now, this is the section that's gonna be the most relevant, I think, in terms of how to structure this part of the cup, because we have what appears like scales. The best way to think about this is lines that, that flow around the shape, and they will tend to do that, and if I do this very roughly, in diagonals. Now I've just created some lines that go diagonally across like this. And what I shall do next is have some lines that cut across it the opposite way. And so we end up with a, a series of diamond shapes, essentially. Within each one of these diamond shapes, we're going to have to just change it up a little bit, otherwise it's gonna look a little too artificial. So actually we're gonna, within each one of those, create a slightly different shape here. So it comes to a bit more of a, a pointy bit at the, the tip, and we can do that for every single one. So we're just gonna take it in a little bit, then it comes to a point, and it comes like this. So I'll pick another one in isolation. So rather than having it coming from the very corners, it's gonna be slightly indented. It does come down to the this part of the diamond, but then it goes up and it doesn't go to the very corner. So it is a little bit shorter going into that very corner. And then we can have another one going up takes a little bit of time to do this, but the overall effect is gonna be a lot better for it. And as they get towards the edge, they're gonna kind of squish together. You won't notice the separations as much, it doesn't matter. And then as we come into this section, you might just get a, a more of a crowded sense of some of them. Don't worry about it. 
really along the edges. As long as in the main section of it you really get a sense of that pattern, then that's the main effect achieved. You'll get quicker as you go along, you'll get the sense of it and you'll get a little bit faster and more efficient at it as well. So that's the overall pattern effect. But obviously, in addition to that, we've got a lot more shading to do. So I'm just going to do the other one, the same effects, just so that we've got the whole image addressed. So again, I'm going to create this wavy line that's not too perfect looking. Then we'll just tidy up the edges of this cup shape. So perhaps because we're seeing it from the side, we're going to see this curve around the lip of that cup shape more than we would on that one. And then we can have it going the other way. And then it was curving this way at that side, but then we're going to have those curving the other way. So we've got essentially those diamond shapes anyway, and then we'll just get to creating those shapes within them again. Again, don't worry if they squish up a little bit on the edges and at the top doesn't really matter. So once you've got that basic pattern, then we can start really thinking about shading, obviously. So they're almost touching, so we're going to have a real sense of shadow in here. So when I'm using shading techniques, I'm really not very precious with it. I don't care about smoothness. I'm more interested in getting the tone and the shading in the right places. And I think then you're gonna get that realism, the effect that you want. The neatness, I, personally, it's not something I've ever well, not for a long time. I've, I've not really focused too much on the neatness. Now, these actual lines, we can perhaps just add a bit more thickness to these lines. So rather than just being one line, it could be, and we could even turn the size of the brush up to about 30%, so double the size, and we can just go over these lines, perhaps just lightly though, so don't press on too much. Just thicken them up somewhat. We're also going to have a bit more tone at the very tip of them as well. They just seem to have a slight change of color at the very end of this tip shape. So we're gonna thicken up the line slightly. And also shade on the very, the end of them a little bit. So I'm just going to add a slight hint of shading along this edge here. Basically what I want to do is create like a, a middle section that is reflecting more light than anywhere else. And to create a sense that it curves there a little bit, perhaps you just need this bit of shading in there as well. So I'm only pressing lightly. Let's just create a bit more of this gap. And I'm going to start adding some shading to this part of the acorn as well. So this section is going to be in shadow predominantly. And then we almost want the, the lines really to help describe the shape. So there are actual textured lines on the acorn you can see. It's not completely smooth. I see a lot of illustrations of acorns and they make it look incredibly smooth and flat. Actually there are lines here. So we can go back and add more of those lines. I'm just slightly now using the the side of the Apple Pencil just to get a bit more of a shading technique. Again, we're using these lines to follow the actual shape to try and help describe it. I'm just going to turn the opacity down to about 30% just so I can continue adding the shading but it's not going to be quite as dramatic. So again I'm leaving a slightly lighter section in the middle of this cup just so it gives the impression that it's reflecting some light back. So I'm not spending a huge amount of time on this drawing. I'm trying to just get the, the general effect for you. And 
And with something like this, it is, it's a matter of building it up in sections. It's not going to happen straight away. Keep building up the impression. Let's get rid of all the white still on that image. And you can see I'm, not all the lines are going to go in the flow of the grain of the acorn, and that's okay. We can do sort of more, more like, almost like a cross-hatching shading, really. Don't see the lines necessarily, but we are changing the direction constantly. So you can go in and just add some slightly more exaggerated lines here and there. Not everywhere. You don't want to do too many of these, but just a hint here and there that you've got some slightly more pronounced lines in there. Again, just thicken in some of these lines on this edge, just so you can really see the, the separation of those shapes. If you're starting to lose that effect in places, just go in there and further refine those, make them a bit clearer. So again, just to define up this edge, give it some nice dark tone so you can see a clear separation between the acorn and the cup. In terms of this little, almost like a baby acorn in the back of this section, I'm not going to worry about the detail. We don't need to start adding the pattern, we're just getting a round shape. So we bring in the shading technique. We don't need to get bogged down in the tiny details for this one. We'll go in and add some shading for the branch. Again, I'm not going to add a lot of detail to that. I'm really trying to concentrate all my attention on the actual acorns. So I'm going to add more shading onto this edge, so it's almost like it's curving away from the light here, so this whole lower section, and it's the same here really, should have a bit more shading on it, because it curves around, therefore it needs more shading. I can go back in and add some highlights afterwards as well. But we'll start with the shadow. Again, use some of the, the stripes that go in the direction. So you don't want to overdo it, but you definitely need to hint that they are there. You don't want to lose that sense of the grain. The very fact that you've thought about it and you've added a hint of it there is, is enough. You don't need to over egg it. It's very easy to overdo an element like that. Just using the side of the Apple Pencil, just to blend it in a little bit more. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with the eraser. I'm actually going to put it on a soft brush. I'm going to put it at around 4% size, but really low on the opacity. So about 10% on the opacity. And I can just go in and just bring in the effect of a little bit of a shine in places. Just helps bring in a sense of light, perhaps impacting. And I'm also then going to turn it down to about 2% size and just bring it in a little bit more on this edge over here, just to help bring out a sense of shine, maybe a little bit there. Just to bring out some of the shine. Now I'm going to create a sense that there are some oak leaves attached to these acorns, obviously. I'm just gonna keep it as pretty much a silhouette to add a hint that there's leaves there. So I'm just carefully drawing an outline. I'm not trying to do this 100% realistically. Just a hint, there's acorn leaves, or rather oak leaves in the background. I'm just getting some of the basic shape, and then I'm just going to block in some shading for that. So I'm just doing it as a, like a hatching technique initially. I'll go back in and tidy that up, but I'll do the same for the other one as well.
So I'm keeping the leaves really quite loose. I don't want to get bogged down in detail. So more like a, a cross hatching technique, changing the direction up, just creating, like I say, more of a silhouette of a leaf in the background. It's not the main focal point of the, the drawings, but it, it helps, it adds an element to it. It gives it a context I think is useful to have it. But it just isn't the main focal element. So I'm not gonna spend as much time on the leaves, but I want them to be there at least. I'm leaving a bit of a, a spine up the leaf so I don't shade all the way up. And then I'm going to again, whoops, change direction. And then I'm going to change direction again with the shading. Create this more of a cross hatch effect. Now, just because I'm doing this rough effect for the leaves doesn't mean that if you were to follow this, that you would have to do the same. But I'm just trying to get the effect in for the benefit of the tutorial, really. But I'm just trying to also, I guess, illustrate the fact that, you know, not everything in your studies or your drawings needs to have the same level of finish. You can create an effect by having some bits really standing out and other bits just a bit more subdued in a slightly rougher, sketchier style. They can still all add up together. Not everything in the drawing has to be of the absolute same finish. And I guess we could go in there. So I'll go with the, in fact, I'll stick on the eraser. I'll go to the sketching brush. We'll go into the 6B pencil again. So we'll put it at the 30% size still, and we'll stick at the 30% opacity or thereabouts. And we'll just go in and exaggerate the fact that there are spines. There's like a, a thread that goes in there in the middle section. So without getting bogged down in the absolute detail, you can still add details but it just doesn't have to be as laboured on, just to get the impression. Touch more shading just to fine tune for the actual acorns, maybe add a bit more, just texture in these areas. You don't need to specify exactly what they are, but just a, the odd anomaly here and there, the bits that stick out that you wouldn't necessarily expect or imagine can really just help sail you know, the idea that it's a real natural thing rather than a concept of what it is. So anomalies really can help. Perhaps you can go in there and just tidy up the edges if it looks a bit untidy in places, especially along the main part of the acorn here. So it's okay if it looks sketchy style, but sometimes you can go a little bit too far with that, of course. Perhaps in the darker areas here, we can just hint at those stripes a little bit more clearly. Okay, I'm gonna leave this particular tutorial here, this drawing here. Hope you've enjoyed watching. Hope you've picked up a couple of techniques. Do make sure to hit the thumbs up, the like button, please. It really helps out the video and the channel as well. And I hope to catch you back here soon. See you later.